So I've been running a data analytics agency for many years and I've also worked for agencies where I've run the data analytics function. Even though when, when I, you know, I've been doing this for many years and it's been great, um, there are challenges with running a data analytics agency and a lot of people I speak to who want to uh, start a data analytics agency are always asking me, you know, um, how do I do this, how do I do that? And then one day I was, I was sitting down with one of these uh, founders um, and I said to him, look, I'm, I'm giving you sort of an idea of how to start an analytics agency and I've got a video on that you can watch it um, in, on my channel but there are things that you need to be um, uh, mindful of or concerned about because there are pitfalls in running a data analytics agency so what I want to do in this video is just go through a few examples uh, or a few um, things or a few key aspects uh, that you need to watch out for when running your data analytics agency now one of the biggest challenges you have is defining a clear value proposition you can't say something generic like we help businesses and make data-driven decisions or we analyze your data um, you know effect effectively or fast or whatever it you know broad propositions don't really work anymore you need to have a very specific and very clear uh, value proposition now the reason for that is when you um, are asked by companies well what, what's different about you you need to be able to articulate that very clearly now a lot of the some of the times when, when I've uh, started uh, analytics agencies I never really had a, a clear proposition and mainly because I I'd already started like my agency with like a founding client or I'd already won clients through my network and so I didn't really have to worry about that but later on when I was trying to win more clients I found that unless I had a clear proposition I couldn't articulate why they should choose me and not someone else. Another aspect that um, when you're running a data analytics agency that you need to be worried about is financial management especially cash flow. Um, so you know even though you, you might be working on a lot of projects um, you may not be paid for those projects until quite further down the line it could be months it could be several months before you're paid but in the meantime you've got expenses whether that's subscription expenses whether that's rent for an office whether that's staff salaries um, so you need to worry about you know your finances and how you manage them so in the early days uh, what's really good is to keep a really tight rein on cash flow uh, and make sure that you don't spend money where you don't need to it's really tempting to be like go overboard and go I'm going to buy this I'm going to get this subscription I'm going to get this uh, get a really nice big office if it's not needed don't do it if you can work from home work from home okay try to um, be very good uh, with, with your cash uh, make sure you manage your finances very tightly make sure you work with your accountant to understand you know when to pay when your taxes are due uh, when invoices you need to pay are due so that you're on top of that because that's something that could actually um, destroy a very successful data agency that you may have loads of clients and you're doing very well but you don't have any cash in the bank and you can't pay salaries you can't pay subscriptions and suddenly you find you can't operate even though you've actually got very good clients and you're probably winning more clients as well so financial management is quite key something to be really uh, wary of and watch out for when running your data analytics agency now another thing uh, that I found quite uh, hard um, I mean it gets easier as, as you go along and I'm uh, you know I enjoy building teams but it is actually hiring people and retaining people now you know you may decide that your agency is just yourself or you and your partner and you can keep it that small if you want to and you know what I've seen lots of successful uh, people run data analytics agencies as solo uh, founders or co-founders uh, two or three of them and and that's fine but you know some people and most people actually I know want to grow their agency they want to become big um, so that means that they need to hire people and so hiring people and retaining them is really hard and if you don't uh, have a strategy on doing that what you find is that you a, either hire the wrong people and it doesn't work for you and so you've wasted a lot of time or the people that you do hire you can't keep them because you don't have a strategy in place so what I would suggest is that um, if you are going to hire people and grow your agency that you have a strategy in place on what your recruitment's going to look like how you're going to work out who fits I mean what I do is that I don't really necessarily always look for technical skills I look for cultural fit I make sure that the person that I'm going to be hiring will get on with the rest of my team get on with me because if, you, if they can work as part of the team and they have the basic necessities of a data analyst or a data scientist or even a data engineer the rest I can teach okay or the rest can be taught um, by, by my team by myself or they can learn it uh, through training but if they don't fit then what you find is that um, that person a either disrupts the team or 
uh, leaves because they've, they've not fitted in. So, you know, you have a strategy for retention, uh, a recruitment and retention. Technical challenges is also something that you need to be mindful of when you are running your own data analytics agency. So as you go out and getting clients, um, you probably work with a lot of different clients and they will have a lot of different setups, technical setups that you've probably not even experienced or seen in your career. And so what you need to do is um, be able to manage those technical uh, challenges. What I mean by this is that, for example, if they have an on-premise solution and you need to understand how to get data from that, you need to have solutions in place. You need to be able to work out, do I ask for a, a direct connection to that database? Do I ask for an extract? Have like solutions in place. Work with your team to understand what other infrastructure and technical setups that they've seen um, so that you are prepared for anything that comes up. Now, generally what you'll find is that uh, most clients will have setups that look familiar or you're able to work around them, but there will be instances where even the client doesn't know how to get access to the data and so therefore you need to be able to pull on a network of people or even within your own team but ideally within a wider network who can advise you on how to solve those problems and technical uh, challenges can actually make or break a project because if you can't get access to the data quick enough uh, then the client might just decide well you know what it's not worth it if it's taking us weeks just to get access to the data god knows how long it will take for us to run the actual project so uh, make sure that you don't um, you know get hampered by technical challenges have uh, strategies and solutions in place um, before they happen alongside that what you might find is that there are sort of data quality issues um, that you encounter so again you, you know there'll be things that you probably haven't encountered so make sure you've done your research or you're able to lean on people who can help you understand uh, the data sets and that you can also be able to solve the problem for the business because sometimes those data quality issues may have been something consistent or persistent within the business they've not been able to solve it if someone from outside like yourself can come in and solve it they'll really value that as i mentioned before unless you're wanting to just be one two three people uh, co-founder type agency that's fine but if you're trying to grow apart from the retention and uh, recruitment challenge that i mentioned before there is a scalability issue because what happens is that a lot of sort of uh, service-based agencies are pretty much linear so the more projects you get the more people you need okay so it's like a line so more people more projects becomes like that what you want to do is start building processes in place so that um, you can uh, build efficiencies so certain things that you can do that are repeatable that you can do them much more effectively or with more junior resources because if you don't do that what you end up doing is that for every project it, it's a, like a, a new learning uh, curve every time uh, and you don't want that okay you want to try to build efficiencies uh, um, into your processes and into your ways of working so that as you grow you're not having to hire you know the the, the same level of uh, staff that you need uh, for each client you're able to build in efficiencies and potentially use more junior resource or make re uh, current resources work more effectively one of the biggest challenges that you'll probably come across uh, when you're running your data analytics agency um, is client management okay uh, now most clients you work with will be amazing you, you love working with them and you know it will be a great relationship but there will be instances where the relationships do get strained um, and that's where you need to learn how to manage clients the best way to do is always stay in touch with the client keep in contact don't leave any uh, periods of silence that um, you know can create any misunderstanding or ambiguity um, so keep the client updated try and have regular check-ins uh, don't just like engage with the client you're working with see if you can engage with people senior people more junior to your client so that the whole business or all of the stakeholders are kept informed even if that means just sending out an email at the end of the week to say this is the status of the project because client management is one of those things that and when it's when it goes wrong that you realize how much of a big impact it can have on your agency. So try to make sure that before it goes wrong, you have you have done things uh, to mitigate as much of that risk as you can. That then brings me on to another thing, which is project management. Now, as a data professional, you may not be used to sort of managing projects in, in a sort of structured way. You may be able to, you may be familiar with managing like data analytics projects, but actually uh, understanding or um, knowing the elements of project management is very useful. Now you can either hire a, a dedicated project manager or you could learn about that and it's just simple steps like you know having regular checking stand-ups uh, you know project meetings uh, project updates uh, steering committees whatever it is you make sure that all of those things are in place um, because if you sort of skimp on that or if you ignore the project management element of it when things do go wrong you may find that 
um, they, they were, could have been avoided if you had good project management in place. Like I said, when things go well, you, you never miss those things, but it's when they go wrong that you realize that if, did you, if you had very good and robust project management in place, um, that you could have mitigated some of those um, mistakes. In the data space, the other thing you need to be mindful of uh, that can be a uh, pitfall and, and sort of hamper some of your plan is the reg regulatory changes. So if you've built your business on a particular data set or a particular analysis or a particular way of doing something, then the regulatory uh, environment may change and certain things uh, may no longer be possible. So for example, uh, you know, if the, they decide that certain cookies are no longer allowed or you can't use certain customer data, um, that, that could impact how you do business, okay? So just make sure you keep an eye on the regulatory uh, and compliance uh, environment to make sure that there's nothing coming up that could uh, disrupt your business model. Uh, and if something is coming up that you have uh, compensated for it or mitigated for it so that you've got like an alternative plan uh, should that come along. And then finally, competition. Okay, so it doesn't matter how unique or how good you think you are, there is competition out there. There are loads of companies who do exactly the same as you're going to do. Um, and that's just the reality of life. So just make sure you, you know who your competition is, you know, check their uh, offering and their proposition to make sure that you understand how they're positioning themselves, how you can do differentiate yourself um, and also what they're doing in the space because what you don't want to do is be left behind because sometimes it can be uh, all encompassing when you're working on a client project that you forget what else is happening what's new in the in the space so try and keep an eye on your competition keep an eye on the landscapes so that you stay ahead um, of or stay ahead or at least uh, stay on par with what other people are doing. Well, thank you for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you put it in the comment section below and keep watching and sharing the video.